Have you ever wondered about the true nature of the universe? What is the nature of reality, and how did everything we know come into existence? Scientists throughout history have grappled with this question, and have come up with concepts such as string theory and the existence of dark matter. However, Sir Roger Penrose believes this theory is incorrect, and everything we know about the universe is false. Let's talk about this controversial claim and how it has shaken the very core of the laws of physics. I mean, string theory proposes the wrong number of dimensions of space, for instance. It proposes the wrong sign for the cosmological constant, for instance. All sorts of things which have come out of string theory are just wrong. Now, you could get round this one way or another. I know people like to tuck all these extra dimensions into a little tiny ball. They haven't answered the question that I've often raised in my books about that, which is that it doesn't really solve the problem. I mean, there are big, huge problems facing string theory. I, th I don't quite know why we're talking about this as the multiverse anyway, because string theory is just is a particular theory which I don't think has much in the way of support for it. It's got a lot of people who argue for it, but that's not scientific support. There aren't experiments which support string theory. String theory is widely accepted in the scientific community as an explanation for the nature of reality. However, it's important to note that not all scientists support this theory. A prominent figure in this descent is the renowned British mathematician and Nobel Prize laureate Sir Roger Penrose, who holds the view that string theory is incorrect and that there are no additional dimensions. In our universe, whether we're explaining the orbit of a planet around a star, the trajectory of a baseball in the air, the intricate workings of a magnet or a battery, or understanding light and gravity, we must grasp the fundamental laws that govern nature and influence the tiniest building blocks of matter. Fortunately, our universe doesn't demand absolute comprehension of every detail. If it did, scientific progress would have faced insurmountable challenges throughout history. Instead, our journey towards scientific advancement follows a practical, step-by-step -step approach. Consider the case of Sir Isaac Newton. He didn't need to wrestle with the concept of atoms to make groundbreaking contributions to our understanding of the laws governing motion and gravity. Similarly, James Clark Maxwell didn't find it necessary to explore the realm of electrons and charged particles to develop a robust theory of electromagnetism. Einstein didn't have to delve into the primordial nature of space and time to formulate a theory of how they curve under the influence of gravitational force. These remarkable discoveries, among many others forming the foundation of our current understanding, emerged with specific contexts. These contexts often left profound questions unanswered, allowing each revelation to contribute a piece to the grand puzzle of existence. Remarkably, even in the present day, we're still uncertain about the comprehensive mosaic that harmoniously connects all the diverse puzzle pieces into a coherent whole. One concept aiming to provide an answer is string theory. String theory is a theoretical framework in physics that aims to offer a unified description of the fundamental forces and particles in the universe. At its core, string theory proposes that the basic building blocks of the universe are not quite like particles as described by traditional particle physics. Instead, it envisions these building blocks as tiny, vibrating strings. These strings have the ability to oscillate at different frequencies, giving rise to various types of particles and interactions. The concept of string theory originated in the late 20th century as physicists endeavored to reconcile two seemingly incompatible theories, general relativity, which explains gravity as a curvature of space-time on cosmic scales, and quantum mechanics, which deals with the behavior of matter and energy on subatomic scales. String theory surfaced as a potential solution by suggesting that the basic elements of reality are not zero-dimensional points, but rather one-dimensional strings that vibrate within a multi-dimensional space. In this theory, the universe is depicted as having more than the familiar three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. String theory necessitates additional dimensions, usually six or seven, to accommodate the diverse vibrational patterns of these strings. These extra dimensions, often compactified or curled up, are not directly observable at our macroscopic scale. 
They're believed to be responsible for molding the properties of particles and forces, even though they exist beyond our direct perception. A fundamental aspect of string theory is its innate capacity to seamlessly integrate gravity into its framework. Unlike other quantum field theories, where gravity is often treated as an external force acting on particles, string theory incorporates the gravitational force directly into its equations. This marks a significant departure from previous attempts to unify quantum mechanics and gravity. Additionally, string theory introduces the concept of various string vibrational modes, each corresponding to different types of particles. For instance, particles like quarks, electrons, and photons, which constitute the standard model of particle physics, can be interpreted as distinct vibrational states of these fundamental strings. This insight potentially provides an explanation for the diverse spectrum of particles observed in particle accelerators. It offers a unified perspective, connecting the fundamental forces of the universe with the vibrational patterns of these strings, making string theory a unique and compelling approach in the quest to understand the underlying nature of our reality. You know, I was all for it back when they started that adventure back in 19, early 80s, in 1982. And, in fact, at the time I was at the University of Texas, where some of the leading thinkers at the time were based. And you'd add, string theory is like the theory of everything. It would get you an understanding where Einstein's theories end and pick up at the, it would allow you to divide by, by zero legally, okay? That's what string theory would allow you to do. It would allow you to describe the universe at the moment of the Big Bang, which is where right now our theories can't get us there, possibly even before the Big Bang. It would unify the science of the large, general relativity, with the science of the small, quantum mechanics. All right, if that's the case, fine. I asked him, how close are you? So a couple of years away, we're almost there. So 1985 rolls by. Oh, how's it coming? We're going well. How, how close? Oh, a couple of years away. They've been saying a couple of years for 27 years, 26 years. So I'm kind of losing enthusiasm. But they're the only game in town and they're really cheap to fund. Critics of string theory, with Sir Roger Penrose being the most notable among them, raise significant concerns about its validity. Penrose, a renowned theoretical physicist and mathematician, acclaimed for his contributions to general relativity, cosmology, and black hole studies, has expressed skepticism about string theory. His criticism stems from both conceptual and empirical concerns, reflecting his distinct approach to understanding the fundamental nature of the universe. One of Penrose's central criticisms of string theory revolves around its lack of predictive power and empirical testability. In his view, a fundamental theory of physics should not only be mathematically elegant and internally consistent, but should also generate testable predictions that can be verified or disproven through experiments or observations. According to Penrose, this ability to be empirically tested is a crucial criterion for the credibility of any scientific theory. Therefore, his skepticism towards string theory is rooted in its inability to provide concrete, testable predictions that can be substantiated through experimental evidence or observational data. Despite its remarkable mathematical beauty and potential for unifying fundamental forces, string theory faces a substantial challenge. It has not yet generated predictions that can be directly tested using current or foreseeable experimental techniques. Sir Roger Penrose has underscored a critical issue with string theory, its allowance for a vast array of possible solutions and scenarios. This vast landscape makes it difficult to pinpoint a unique prediction that distinctly sets string theory apart from other scientific frameworks. This lack of specificity significantly diminishes the theory's scientific value from Penrose's perspective. It hampers its ability to offer concrete predictions regarding the behaviors of particles or the outcomes of experiments. In contrast, Penrose's own work, such as his development of the Penrose diagram and his proposal for the cosmic microwave background radiation as evidence for the Big Bang, has been characterized by his focus on making testable predictions. His theories provide observable consequences, allowing them to be empirically validated or refuted through experiments or observations. This emphasis on tangible, testable predictions underscores the difference in approach between string theory and Penrose's scientific contributions. 
highlighting the challenges faced by string theorists in establishing the empirical foundations of their work. Another dimension of Roger Penrose's skepticism towards string theory lies in its departure from his preferred approach to understanding the fundamental nature of space-time and geometry. Penrose has long advocated for twister theory, an alternative method for describing space and time that he developed. Twister theory aims to unify general relativity and quantum mechanics by concentrating on the geometric properties of space-time and the relationships between light rays and null geodesics. According to Penrose, string theory places excessive emphasis on particle-like entities and their vibrations, potentially overlooking the deeper geometric structure of space-time. He contends that a more geometric approach, like twister theory, might offer a more profound understanding of the fundamental nature of the universe. This philosophical divergence in perspective has led to Penrose's reluctance to fully embrace string theory as a viable framework for unification. Additionally, he's expressed concerns about the complexity and mathematical sophistication that string theory demands. While he acknowledges the mathematical beauty and elegance of the theory, he questions whether its intricate formalism signifies deeper physical truths or if it might be the result of the mathematical framework itself. Penrose's own work often revolves around developing intuitive and geometrically motivated concepts. He's raised doubts about whether the complexity of string theory could hinder a clear physical interpretation, emphasizing the importance of a theory being conceptually intuitive and accessible. Furthermore, Penrose's dismissal of string theory can be contextualized with his overall approach to theoretical physics. He's had a long-standing history of challenging established paradigms and exploring unconventional solutions to fundamental problems. His inclination towards unconventional thinking is not limited to his views on string theory. For instance, his research on the nature of consciousness has also been met with skepticism from some segments of the scientific community. This skepticism arises because his ideas diverge significantly from mainstream cognitive science, reflecting his willingness to explore unorthodox perspectives, even in areas beyond theoretical physics. One alternative that Penrose believes is superior to string theory is his proposal of conformal cyclic cosmology, or CCC, a distinctive and thought-provoking approach to understanding the nature of the universe that diverges from the mainstream views embraced by string theory. CCC is a speculative cosmological model introduced by Penrose as an alternative to the more widely accepted inflationary Big Bang theory, addressing the ultimate fate of our universe. This model builds upon Penrose's previous work, including his contributions to black hole physics, twister theory, and investigations into the nature of space-time singularities. Conformal cyclic cosmology, or CCC as I sometimes call it, is a cosmological scheme which I introduced in about 2005, sometime around then, which has, I talk about things which are called eons. Now the e our present eon would be starting with the Big Bang, the universe expands, and then it goes in for this exponential expansion which is fairly recently observed, um, and then that goes on forever. This remote expansion is physically equivalent to another Big Bang. And our Big Bang was the continuation of the remote future of an exponentially expanding previous eon. And the idea is these eons go on and on and on forever, in both directions. At the core of CCC lies the concept of conformal geometry involving a mathematical transformation that preserves angles while changing distances. Penrose suggests that the universe undergoes an infinite series of cycles, each consisting of an eon. During each eon, the universe experiences a phase of expansion followed by contraction. Crucially, Penrose introduced a novel twist to the concept of the Big Bang and cosmic evolution in CCC. He proposes that as the universe approaches the end of a contraction phase, space-time geometry becomes conformally related to that of a subsequent eon's initial state. This means that the distant future of one eon is connected in a conformal manner to the distant past of the next eon. This unique connection ensures that information and structures from one eon are preserved and carried over to subsequent eons, creating a cyclical pattern in the evolution of the universe. 
One of the intriguing consequences of the cyclical conformal geometry is the avoidance of the notion of an ultimate big crunch singularity, a concept present in traditional cosmological models. In these models, the universe's expansion is believed to be driven by a period of inflation, followed by a potential slowing down and eventually leading to a big crunch singularity. However, in conformal cyclic cosmology, the universe's evolution does not culminate in a singular point. Instead, it smoothly transitions from one eon to the next, maintaining its geometry and preserving information without the need for a dramatic collapse into a singular state. Penrose's skepticism extends to the existence of dark matter, a substance that clashes with his alternative CCC theory. When we consider the matter we are familiar with, atoms, stars, galaxies, planets, and everything around us, it constitutes less than 5% of the known universe. About 25% is dark matter, and the remaining 70% is dark energy. Both dark matter and dark energy are invisible components of the universe. Dark matter plays a vital role in allowing galaxies to exist. When scientists calculated the reasons behind the universe's structure, it became evident that the amount of visible matter alone couldn't account for it. The gravity generated by visible matter isn't powerful enough to form galaxies and intricate structures. Without dark matter, stars would likely be scattered randomly, and galaxies as we know them wouldn't form. Thus, there must be something else present, something that doesn't emit or reflect light, something dark. Although we can't directly observe dark matter, we can infer its presence through its gravitational effects. Regions with a high concentration of dark matter bend light passing nearby, indicating the presence of this unseen substance. The gravitational interaction serves as indirect evidence of dark matter's existence, despite our inability to directly perceive it. Our knowledge about dark matter is limited but crucial. It's not merely clouds of normal matter without stars, as such clouds would emit detectable particles. It's also not antimatter, which produces distinctive gamma rays upon interacting with normal matter. Dark matter is distinct from black holes, which are highly compact objects with intense effects on their surroundings, whereas dark matter appears scattered widely throughout the universe. In essence, there are three certainties. Existence. Something unseen and mysterious exists in the universe, evident from its gravitational effects on visible matter. Gravity interaction. Dark matter interacts with gravity, shaping the motion of galaxies and cosmic structures. Abundance. Dark matter is abundant, far outweighing visible matter and constituting a significant part of the universe's mass. Penrose's perspective on dark matter differs from a simple denial of unseen mass. Instead, he offers an alternative explanation for the observed phenomena typically attributed to dark matter. His skepticism is complex and needs to be understood in context. A crucial aspect of his position involves his proposal within the framework of CCC. In Penrose's CCC theory, he suggests that certain gravitational anomalies, often attributed to dark matter, might be explained differently. Specifically, in galaxies, he proposes that observed gravitational effects could result from the cumulative influence of gravitational radiation emitted by distant massive objects over cosmic time scales. According to Penrose, this gravitational radiation could create the appearance of extra mass without the need for non-interacting dark matter particles. On the grand scale of things, it seems like humanity is still far away from truly understanding the true nature of the universe. As we continue to understand more about the laws that govern space and time, hopefully, the answer will present itself in due course. But what do you think? Is string theory more plausible, or does Sir Roger Penrose's CCC theory make more sense? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.